Hello there, I have listeners. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. All right, so today we are going to be talking about The Violent Season by Sarah Walters. This is kind of a perfect novel to read right as we're approaching the fall season, you know? Um, I have to say... Uh, <laughs> Well, at the end of the day, I did like this book. I will say that there, I do have some misgivings for the novel itself. And I will talk a little bit about why I have some of these misgivings. So first, I want to talk about what I did like about the book. I really like how Walters handles the topic of violence. Um, In this fictional town of Rolf Ridge, everyone... Every November, there is some unspeakable crime that happens, um, either a suicide or murder. Something bad happens every November. And it's kind of like this urban legend that every November, violence kind of latches on to one person until it explodes, basically. And why it never really gave credence to this kind of urban legend until her mother was murdered one November night. She came home, she found her mother lying in the pool of her own blood. Um, And it still traumatizes her. You get to see how that trauma affects her throughout the, throughout the novel. You know, she just doesn't want to be in the house alone. She can't even walk to her room um, on her own without very clearly imagining her mother on the floor even a year later it haunts her the event haunts her as it should because she loved her mother she had you know her misgivings with her mother sure but at the end of the day she did love her mother Uh, I think a lot of people have tough relationships with their mothers Um, but regardless it really does tackle this idea of violence and how and how violence just seems to a seep into people um, now statistically crime does rise during the winter months you know the nights get longer they get colder Um, and it's almost as if that desperation, that coldness, that darkness from the outside just seeps into people's bones. You know, with the holidays coming around, people are spending more and more money. Um, depression hits, you know, again, the nights are longer, they are colder. And typically around the winter months, that's when crime does tend to rise. Statistically, not always true, but statistically, that is the pattern. But when it comes to this novel, it's all about Wyatt struggling to reconcile her mother's death while noticing that her friend, Cash, this boy she's known her entire life, this boy she has loved her entire life, is somehow suddenly exhibiting this violence. Um, the first line of the book does read, um, When Cash told me he wanted to kill Porter Dawes, we were standing on the peak of Lawson Bluff, our sleeves pulled down over our hands. It's a cold night. They're out there smoking um, a couple cigarettes and looking down at their town. And her friend is talking about killing someone, about wanting to kill someone. And it's a very strange and very strong opening. And you're just like, okay, what is going on here? So it's all about how Wyatt is trying to understand this violence and how violence can really... Everyone is capable of a violent act. But I think what Walters does highlight in this book and what I thought was really wonderful about it was the fact that she's highlighting violence, but she's also highlighting how 
yes, we're all capable of it. And some, yes, some people are just born bad. But what really gets to you is you have a whether or not to act on the violence or not. You have a choice whether to give in to all of that negativity that builds up inside you or not. There are other ways to express yourself rather than violence. And you see it. Both Wyatt and Cash each lost their mothers at different ages, of course. Cash lost his mother at a very young age. And his relationship with his father isn't the best, whereas Wyatt lost her mother, you know, when she's in high school. And her relationship with her father has always been really good, and it's even good now. You know, it's a little strained, but you see the love there. Nature versus versus nurture, I guess you could say, plays a part in both of them. They are each capable of violence. But which one does the violence? Which one is capable of the violence? The one who succumbs to the darkness, the one who succumbs to giving in to all of that negativity. Whereas for Wyatt, coming to terms with her grief, coming to terms with her darkness and accepting it as something that will be there and choosing to move on past it is what makes her a compelling character. Because there's also a toxic relationship with Cash. I mean, this is a very toxic relationship with Cash. If you end up liking Cash when you're reading this book, I will be very shocked. I took somewhat a somewhat instant dislike of him because of how he treats Wyatt. Wyatt is so hopelessly in love with him. She is oh, been there. She is so unbelievably in love with this boy. And this boy you see he cares for her. On some level he does care about her. I'm not saying he doesn't care about her. He does. He does care about her, but it's not enough. He cares more about himself. He cares more about what she can give to him. She cares more about this sense of security that she offers him versus everything else because he will use her. Like he he doesn't think he's good enough for her and he's not. He's not. When you read the story, you'll understand he is not good for her at all. He's not a good person because he is selfish. He cares more about himself and what she can offer him versus what he could give to her. He doesn't care about her. Not really. Um, I know I said he does, but he does. Okay. So he does care about her. Yes. But he cares more about himself. He is kind of selfish and when you get to that climactic scene between the two of them and the hollowness that, you know, f fills her, you're just like, okay, she's starting to wake up. She's starting to understand that she can do better, that she is worth more, that her worth is not dependent on him and what he wants. So it's so interesting to see it. It's so I'm trying to find the word and I can't really think of the word but it it is emotional it is kind of uncomfortable too and I think that's where some of my misgivings are because I think my misgivings are more because this is a very toxic relationship between the two characters and that's where most of my misgivings lie and I think that's what's really going to turn people off but I think well not what I think I know Walter is showcasing this toxic relationship because she also shows why it pulling away from it and acknowledging like this isn't healthy me being in love with you is not healthy me being your friend is not good for me so it takes her a while to get to that point but she does get to that point and you see throughout the story those little inklings of awakening and awareness for her and I think that's more than what other people can do a lot of people don't know that they're in toxic relationships they can't acknowledge that they are in um, abusive relationships or they don't want to they want to turn the blind eye because sometimes who are they without this pain I guess who are they without this torment um, who are they without being in that situation like they don't even know themselves so it's more of a fear of the unknown versus the known and you can say that's true for Wyatt too she's always known Cash she's always loved Cash this is the boy she loves but slowly and surely it's, she's awakening and she's trying starting to realize I don't know who you are not really and 
that's what's really gravitating about this story. But that's, I will, I do understand that that is something that is going to turn off readers. Like I said, that had, that gave me my own misgivings as well. But sitting here talking about why gave me mis- my misgivings, it's like, okay, I get it. I understand why the author took this direction. I understand why the author took this route to get to this point. She wants it to be uncomfortable for you. She wants you to acknowledge, hey, maybe you at one point had this sort of re- toxic relationship. If you aren't, he, this is what you can see so that you don't fall into that again. Or people who are in toxic relationships, like, hey, if it makes you uncomfortable, maybe you are in a toxic relationship. You know, it's going to touch buttons. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to touch some buttons for sure. But that's just what good writing does. It affects you. It inspires you. It draws something out of you. And that's why I think ultimately I did enjoy um, the violent season way more than I thought I was going to. So I'm going to go ahead and give this book um, four to five stars. It was well written. I do think the pacing was really well done. And I think the story does offer the reader a lot as far as something emotional and something realistic and something for you to really read and discuss and analyze. So, um, if you're going to go ahead and purchase the book, please remember to purchase through your local bookseller or online book retailer. I will include links in the description of this podcast. I hope you all remember to support me by liking the podcast, subscribing, and also you can make a donation to my um, Buy Me a Coffee so we can keep this channel alive, and um, or even a small donation to my PayPal. And... I also make candles, so you can check out my Etsy store as well. Links to all of that will be in the description of the podcast. Uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading. Mm-hmm.